What is up, Sooner Nation? Welcome back to the Sooner Surge. Before we get started with this video, hit the subscribe button, turn on your notifications so you'll be notified when we release our videos. Also, go to the Fan Stop. You can simply go to fanstop.com. When you get there, click on the shirt of the month, sign up for it, use code SURGE, you'll get 10% off your first three months. Great time to be buying OU gear. Softball going on, baseball in a regional, football around the corner. Get your OU gear at fanstop.com. Yeah, and, and there's also a, a, a softball shirt on there. Uh, that link will be in the description of the video along with uh, other links from the fan shop. Nice. What better time to get your softball gear than now? And, guys, uh, today, uh, OU versus UCLA, and this is an epic battle. This This is such a big game for OU and on their way to win their fourth natty because it's a game. I, I, I don't like the terms must wins, but when you get in these tournaments like this and you see how deep the field is losing this game and then coming all the way back, it's not an easy road. It can be done, but it's not easy. So take care of business today, the Sooners, and let's get this victory. And UCLA guys riding the longest current win streak in college softball at 14, Oklahoma right behind them with 10. Uh, UCLA, the last team to beat Oklahoma in, in the postseason uh, in the World Series there. So uh, a lot of things riding on this game. The question for me, I got a few questions to kind of think about to, as this game approaches is, one, who's going to get the start for Oklahoma on in the circle? Two, can the bats, one through nine, one through nine, all be clicking again and be hitting? And I think that's what it's going to take. Hunter, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm going to start it off with, I think this is the preview of the National Championship Series. Uh, whoever loses this game, I think they go through the loser's bracket as the brackets flip and meet up again in the National Championship Series. I, I just, uh, I think the way UCLA is playing right now, the way Oklahoma is playing right now, I, I think those are the two teams that you're going to see uh, in a three-game set uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday uh, next week in Oklahoma City. But UCLA, you mentioned 14 straight wins uh, last year. I mean, remember how their season ended. They got upset uh, in regionals, losing to Grand Canyon, getting bounced uh, at their own regional. That's a, a tough feeling for a team that's just very good. Maya Brady, one of the best players in college softball, if not the best. Uh, 436 uh, batting average right now with 17 home runs. That's just uh, insane. Uh, but UCLA back in Oklahoma City it seems like they're there all the time and, and they're back for revenge. I mean, you mentioned it uh, two years ago. They're the last team to beat Oklahoma in the postseason. Uh, they then lost 15 to one, I want to say, uh, in that game right after the if game. So uh, I think for Oklahoma, got to get a good start uh, in the circle. And also with these this UCLA pitching staff, uh, got to be able to get runs and force uh, a pitching change uh, as soon as possible. Yeah. Jason Hunter, I think when you think about the last 20 years of college softball, you think about these two programs right here in OU and UCLA, two programs in which have dominated, won many national championships. And Jason Hunter, I think you guys have said it great. The emphasis on this game is huge, not only for Oklahoma, but for UCLA. Because you don't want to have to play play your way through the loser's bracket if you lose this game in order to get into the National Championship Series. And this is also a series in which you're just going to be previewed by with, by in which a ton of superstars are going to be on this field. And Hunter, you already said it. And Maya Brady, who is arguably the best player in college softball, and in my opinion, she is the best player in college softball. And then for Oklahoma, you have Tiara Jennings and Jada Coleman who also have their own argument and their own right to be the best players in college softball right now. So there's just so much talent all over the field, and in which I expect this to be a game tomorrow, in which is probably maybe going to be one of the most viewed games of all time, maybe when you think about the Women's College World Series, just due to the fact of the emphasis that's played on this game and the historical impact that both these teams have made on the, on the history of softball. Yeah, and it, it, it's just a huge game in general. You mentioned the loser's bracket. I mean, I, I think you can look at it, and a lot of times you can say in softball, hey, if you have a great starting pitch and even just one, that you can just ride that ace all the way through. But 
it's getting tougher and tougher to do that. You see it with Kennedy last year and this year throwing so many innings. The, the thing is, if you stay out of the loser's bracket, you, your arms are so much more rested. Because don't forget, even to get back to the championship series, and then you got to play two out of three in that. So I think it's just huge. And uh, Jackson, you mentioned it. Uh, it's a two powerhouse softball programs. That, that's what it is. And it's going to be a great atmosphere, as it always is, a Hall of Fame stadium. Uh, I, I look for Oklahoma to continue their hitting. I think – I think that's where this whole uh, – you want to talk about winning their fourth natty? To me, we talked about probably for the second half of the season. That's where it's going to lie for Oklahoma. If they're hitting the ball, I don't think there's a team left outside of – I'll say Texas. Texas, UCLA, and Oklahoma to me are by far and away three the best offensive teams left in this tournament. I mean, all you have to do is go look at Alabama. They don't score a whole lot. Stanford, I mean, they're putting up um, – just like a record setting performance against OSU uh, last night when they scored five runs. I'm, I'm, I'm being facetious, but I'm just saying, not an offensive powerhouse, uh, you know, in Florida, not an offensive powerhouse, in my opinion. So I think those three teams left, and you look Texas, UCLA, and Oklahoma. So if Oklahoma is scoring runs, Hunter, I think they're going to be very hard to beat in this World Series. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I think with, I mean, right now for Oklahoma, starting wise, I think there's four options. Probably only going to see uh, a couple of those options, if I had to guess. Uh, between Kelly Maxwell, Kirsten Deal, which you saw her out of the pen uh, on Thursday, uh, Nicole May, and Carla Keeney. Uh, but yeah, if you can get them some run support, it, it's very hard to beat Oklahoma. You see it; they got a run rule win uh, in day one of the. WCWS, uh, just a statement win over Duke. And, and a lot of that was uh, the defensive play as well of uh, having their pitchers back. But uh, hitting the ball is, I mean, it's, you have to do it this time of the year. I mean, plain and simple, you're not going to win a game if you're only scoring a couple of runs, uh, especially against a team like UCLA that's probably going to put some runs up on the scoreboard uh, the other way. Yeah. And Jason, this is something that we talked about when we previewed the first game was Oklahoma is going to need other players to make plays outside of the superstars in their lineup. And we saw that in game one versus Duke. You saw a home run from Sidney Sanders, a home run from Alina Torres. Now, I'm not saying that you are going to need a home run from both again from both of them again against UCLA, but you are going to need contributions from everyone in the lineup in which you probably at a point in the game as well are going to once again need someone that maybe isn't a superstar to step up and make the big play in which they can flip the momentum and or be able to just change the trajectory of the game in which Oklahoma needs it most. Yeah, and, and you know, something that wasn't really talked about in the first game that when you get into these games in the World Series make every much of an impact of anything else is go back and look when they got started – Kenzie Hansen's two-run bomb. Jada Coleman stretched that thing into second uh, and huge play. And then you get four runs that inning right off that, right? Uh, Jada Coleman's diving play with the bases loaded. I mean, all it takes is a bobble and a drop there. And three runs score. I mean, there's just so, – that, that's what OU's done so good winning three in a row is the clutch plays that they've had to make either a two-out hit or – even a two-out get on base to start a rally, whatever it is, they've been able to do it. And I think a lot of that started with the seniors. If you go back and look this senior class, which Patty Gasser said, greatest senior class in the history of college softball, win or lose this natty. And you go back and look, it seems to always start with one of those five or six seniors that we've always talked about. And I think it will continue. Now, I, I will say this, though, and I, I want y'all's opinion. Uh, who's going to be in the circle? Is it and and before you answer, Kelly Maxwell's been great. Kelly Maxwell's been, I don't want to the word unhittable, they're not hitting her, but she's putting herself in major problems with her control as of late. And it's not all over the place wild pitches, it's barely missing. I think she's trying to be too perfect, guys. And I think she needs to throw strikes, let the defense do the work, but I Kelly Maxwell, if she does pitch, I don't know if she'll be in the circle, but if she does, she needs to have a game where she's not walking six or seven batters. 
Yeah, uh, pitching matchup from this game is interesting because you look at the UCLA lineup, lefty dominant lineup yeah. that would lead you to maybe say start a lefty, but who do you start? Both of the lefties pitched on Thursday. Kirsten Deal only twenty five pitches, so she could start. I would assume with no issues. Uh, but Kelly Maxwell, 67 pitches, 35 balls. It's now two straight games where uh, the control has been a major issue. Maybe something to monitor there. Uh, is that uh, Does Kelly Maxwell get the start, and how short is that leash? Uh, leash? If she starts to uh, walk a couple batters early on, is it a, a, a bullpen call and kind of uh, see where it goes there? I, I kind of think... UCLA being a program, again, Oklahoma, extremely familiar with. I'm going to go with Nicole May uh, getting the start against the Bruins. Yeah, I am not to agree with Hunter. I think you go with Nicole May just due to the pure fact that she has experience in many, many games in the Women's College World Series. And also, Nicole May, if I remember two years ago, whenever I went to Oklahoma versus UCLA, she did start a game in which – uh, I believe they lost that game, but she actually yes. said yes. It, uh, she, she did. She lost well. that game. Gave up five runs and two point one innings. Oh yeah, and she Yeah, but I do think you give the rock to Nicole May to start the game. Now, how short is her leash? Just due to the fact we've seen her at times in the World Series throughout, while she's been Oklahoma, in which maybe she has struggled in certain games. That'll be something to watch. But I do agree with Hunter. I think Nicole May gets it to start the game. Uh, I disagree with y'all, and I think Kelly Maxwell starts, and he here's why. I think Patty Gasso is basically saying, get back on the horse again. We need you to be you for us to win this natty. We're going to have to have you later in the World Series. I want you to get back in rhythm right now. So I could see them doing that instead of skipping her start, and then it maybe she's thinking about it even more. That's just kind of my opinion. I think they might just go back out there and see what she does with a very, very, very short leech, I will say, though. But uh, what about Sooner standouts tomorrow? Hunter, you going with your normal, T.R.A. Jennings? I, I got to. It's You're counting down the days of uh, T.R.A. Jennings' college career in Oklahoma City, playing against one of her best friends, Amaya Brady. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's uh, a day in which – T.R.A. Jennings hits another home run to move closer uh, to that 100 mark. You know, I don't know how crazy this is for me to say this, but uh, I do think that the sooner standout of the game is going to be Nicole May, Jason. I have been known maybe on this podcast to be the one that has brought Nicole May down the most, but I believe she's going to get the start, and she is going to maybe debatably have the best performance of her career tomorrow. And one in which I think we can look back if Oklahoma does win the national championship and say, Oklahoma does not win this championship if it's not for Nicole May shutting down this explosive UCLA offense. Uh, I'm going to go Alyssa Brito. I think Brito's been swinging the bat really well. I think it continues. This is when she shines. And mm -hmm. I think she'll have a great game. You know UCLA is probably going to throw Tinsley out there, I would expect. Uh, I think OU needs to get early runs, get the lead, get to their bullpen, uh, and, and then kind of do what they did against Duke where uh, just kind of poured on there with a couple. I, I will say this, OU does uh, have the big lead and home run advantage compared to UCLA. So OU can hit the ball out of the it, park. It, looking at RBIs as well, like it's uh, uh, a big difference. And uh, for UCLA, Terry and Tinsley probably both going to see a couple innings. That's what they did against Alabama. They get the win there. So would expect the same against Oklahoma. Well, and you saw Duke switch pitches earlier. I think that's an overall thing that all the coaches probably talk about is don't go let – don't let OU batters see uh, the same pitchers two or three times through the order, but that backfired on Duke. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, hey, should be a great, great game. Uh, excited to watch. Excited to – Root for the Sooners. I think they can do it. Hopefully, my final score prediction, guys, I'm going to go 8-1 Oklahoma. Yeah, for me, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with Oklahoma 6-4. to four. 
Uh, I think it's going to be a tight game and a game in which Oklahoma is going to have a clutch hit late in the game. I'll go uh, another tight game, five to three. Uh, a little more of a low scoring game, but uh, a game that comes down to the wire and Oklahoma gets the win. There you have it, Sooner fans. Appreciate you watching this video. As always, make sure you subscribe, turn on your notifications. We'll be back after the game to chat it up with you, uh, hopefully, after a Sooner victory. Talk to you soon. Till next time, Boomer. <laughs>